I love to talk about the month of April two weeks into the month of May. That's the sort of timely coverage you get on this podcast, George Ryan Video Games. Welcome to said podcast. I'm George. I'm Ryan. This is George Ryan Video Games. We are a monthly video games podcast that talks about the games of the month prior, the news of the month prior, the stuff that we think is worth talking about, and what we're looking forward to in May. We are late. We are very late. May is pretty much already happening right now. Right now, literally. Right now, Some would say it is the 11th of May when we're recording well, this. let's not break the illusion. Uh, I like how Ryan looked at his phone to see if he could check. It was like, I don't know. But... It is the 11th. Yes, it is. But folks, Anyways. I gotta tell you what. Responsibilities. <laughs> college cool. that's what we deal with every day yeah persona per- oh yeah yeah i'm talking about persona by the way not yeah which life. is a crazy thing considering who considering like i'm the persona person yeah you're the persona guy but so, i'm the one who's been playing i'm interested it. to see what your takes are but anyways we are a video games podcast and we usually start with the news so let's start with the news the biggest stories of the month and what's happening in the industry george let me tell you what i feel first of all i think that this whole intro has been a disaster, and I want nice. and I blame you specifically. Okay. But anyways, we usually I feel like every time we do this, there's a break. I feel like there's a breaking story every time we go, right? Yeah. Like I feel like there's always something. And going with that sort of theme, also this is like the second Square related breaking news thing. I think one time it was a Tomb Raider bit. Remember that oh, Shadow yeah. of the Tomb Raider? Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Which. You also had that Marvel thing. I think that was announced like oh, right before. Fuck, yeah, right. Damn, yeah. It's Square, great. always providing us the hot takes. <laughs> yeah. So, in maybe the hottest actual take of a be- of this of like abandoning a studio, or at least not shutting it down. Anyways, uh, Square had their financials report for the last quarter, and in that uh, report, they said that they are ending their relationship with IO, which is a weird way to say that when you own a thing. That's like that's just a weird thing. I'm ending my relationship with my toaster. We are done. We are no longer. I am now taking for bids on my new toaster craigslist.com so yes io is not going to be part of square enix anymore they are currently looking for investors to well someone who wants the company apparently they took quite a bit of loss i'm gonna see if i can see here uh approximately 43 million dollars hmm. that is a pretty big loss they pretty much only handle the hitman series correct exclusively, exclusively. pretty much they okay. worked on kane and lynch when they were owned by idos interesting those are different games <laughs> that's one way to, to describe those games <laughs> But yes, um, this was this for at least the game. The Twitter I follow is like games Twitter, and so that's and it's, a, it's specifically it's a lot of like people who like either write like write for game publications or make games or like work for like game companies. So when you talk about game, like this is the most game ass game ass group ever. Yeah. And this news was pretty not welcomed well because for a lot of people who make games and like write about games, like Hitman was one of, was the best game of 2016. Oh yeah. Um, and it took, I think it took me a while. I think it took everyone a while. It wasn't until game of the year stuff was going on. Like, Oh fuck, that game was good. And I think it was mostly because I think they mentioned it, it came out like slowly. it came out slowly and the launch was rough because but once it was finished, it was a great, yeah, it was a it good was game. A great package. And I think yeah. even like midway through, if you were there for the first round, like, oh, wait, no, they're updating this like regularly. There's these elusive targets that disappear after a while. I mean, yeah, there was like that mission. Mode Gary Busey. Just, like, do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. There's Gary Busey. But yes, it seems like IO, which is weird, especially because IO was talking about season two and season three. Uh, in, like, Hitman? Yeah. Like, because oh. people, like, towards the end of the year, when people were like, this was so great. Like, are you having any plans? Like, yeah, we want to keep doing it. Uh, like they wanted to be the, this platform. I think that's what Square's idea was. That's their plan for Hitman. To make it a platform. To make it a platform mm-hmm. because that's what's popular now. But it seems I'm like assuming that's no longer their plan. Absolutely not. And it also seems like this sort of thing. If you, do you remember? Do you remember how Hitman launched? Because it was at E3 2015 that they showed that trailer. Yes. And then they were like, Hitman's going to be ever evolving thing. They were like, you pay sixty dollars up front. And then we will keep updating the thing. It was and, not met and, super well. Yeah, and everyone's like, so you're, bu- you're buying an uncompleted game? And then, like, at the 11th hour, they're like, okay, fine, 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 fine. We're going to do it episodic instead. And they flipped the switch real quickly. And I remember that being especially weird because they were doing a digital thing because the game couldn't go to retail because yeah. it wasn't finished. And they did refunds, and that's the first time anyone ever did a ref like Sony ever did refunds on the PSN. So people were like, "Wait a minute! So you can do refunds? You just haven't been able? To- you just haven't given us the opportunity?" 
Uh, and yeah, so it didn't launch. It launched Rocky, but the game, like, the, quickly it saw that the game was really something worth investing and in, worth the attention. Uh, watching people play that game is fucking so fun. Oh, yeah, and the game's gorgeous to look at. Yeah. It's crazy good. I'm actually surprised it didn't took off more on Twitch, because it seems like such a Twitch-ass game. Because taking, like, okay, I'm going to go in here, and I'm, we're going to try and do this weird thing to take down this guy. I'm going to use only this axe, and we're going to wear this costume. Let's see how it goes. I, I mean, I don't spend a lot of time on Twitch, but, like, whenever I do... I don't one, either. It's, it's mostly, like, the MLG stuff. and then, Player like, Unknown Battlegrounds. And then occasionally, like, whatever thing is popular at that moment. And I don't think Hitman ever had, like, a moment where it was popular. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. I don't know why. I think it's weird. I think, like, the only people... I think Giant Bomb was the biggest, like torch carrier for that game because they decided to i know the uh yandere uh dev the guy who's working on yandere he really likes he, it he, man he praised it a lot he's like this is what's inspiring a lot of this game and yeah. i love following like, a lot his, of game developers, developers yeah. really fucking loved hitman um so like, yeah did, like a whole analysis of it and it was yeah. very interesting it's we'll, i i don't know i mean i think best case scenario is that because square still owns the ip of hitman even if someone buys io they don't get the franchise with it. Mm-hmm. So the best case scenario is someone buys IO, and then that publisher, you would assume, would want IO to make Hitman games, at least for right now, because that's all they... They probably had a, a roadmap. For, yeah. So the best case scenario would be like, buy them, ask Square for the license, and they will de- they will make the Hitman games, and Square just like gives them the license to make them. Um, it's kind of like a crash in Spyro situation back in the day, which is why you can't see Spyro re-released on the original Spyro games re-released on PlayStation because Universal owned the IP rights, Sony published the game, and they were developed by Insomniac and Naughty Dog. Um, it's complicated. It's complicated, but this I, that's the only that's the best case scenario you think of for IO. So yeah, hearts go out to everyone out there. I know everyone's pretty bummed about that. It's it's especially bummed when you think about what Square is, where they let a team like go on and off on something like Final Fantasy 15 and spend a shit ton of money from the company. Oh yeah. Maybe possibly even tanking it and they're fine. Like well, yeah, you, it's Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, sure, right, right, right. Hitman. Cool. We yeah, can't. awesome, we cool. We decided to use the money for IO and instead gave it to Tetsuya Nomura. So maybe perhaps sometime he'll make a sequel to The, the World Ends With You. He'll think about it Look, if we give him the money. Don't even Don't maybe even he'll think that. about it after like 7 years after you get your Mickey Mouse game. So yeah, George. Let's yeah. talk about the biggest news. Are you ready to enter the Coliseum, Ryan? No, I'm not. But what is? Wait, what's that? Let me tell you about Doritos. Okay. Battlefield One, Zac Efron. Whoa, whoa. Wiz Khalifa. Oh, that's a little too much for me. E3. When you think of E3, that's what I think. Hoop God. Yes. What if we took all of the the all combustible the- elements of E3 and combined like? multiplied them tenfold what if we opened the floodgates and created a coliseum an e and the electronic entertainment expo coliseum i don't know what you're getting at here but i'm terrified so uh earlier eec rolls out the tongue so so earlier this year the electronic entertainment expo the I forget, ESA? Yeah, that's who runs it. They decided that they were going to make E3 open to the public, and it seemed like a sort of desperate attempt to keep E3 a relevant thing. They were going to sell tickets uh-huh. to it. And tickets are pretty expensive. And the thing was like... From, from my understanding, though, it wasn't that hard to get a press badge. Press it was, actually. Yeah. Press it was hard to get okay. still. But you could get an a, a attendee badge. Okay, because okay. that's different. Because if you have a press badge, at least... A publisher or someone will give you the time of day because yeah. they'll think you're a professional. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can talk. And I think that's why my personal publisher didn't go to E3 because he's like, well, if I don't get it, like, there's no point. Like, yeah. no one's gonna distinguish me on whatever. It's like arriving without a business card or whatever. So, yeah. but anyways, in that attempt, people were wondering like, well, E E3 is very not like. It's not you can just go up to like the hottest game and play it. Like it's very packed and you have to have appointments. Yeah, and exactly. And it's not a public show. It's a very bi- there's people from Walmart there saying like, "We'll take 10 copies of fucking Hey Pikmin for the Walmart in Omaha, Nebraska. We'll take sure we'll buy all these fucking Amiibo. I'm sure that'll sell. Give me fucking five Amiibo of fucking the spiky hedgehog from Animal Crossing." Anyways, so everyone's wondering like, "Well, 
they have to switch something up because EA E3. I keep wanting to say EA E3 as it stands. They have it, to make it bigger. They have to make say. it either that or like make it worth people's money because the the tickets are expensive. Yeah. And so what they've decided is to do this Coliseum thing, which is going to be a. It seems like Jeff Keighley is sort of running it. It's going to be a PAX. They are paxifying E3. So okay. there's going to be panels. There's going to be influencers. There's going to be a fucking uh, more buzzwords. Uh, Doritos. Okay, I like it. Uh, Facebook Ocu- actually, Oculus isn't going to be at e- E3 this year. Actually, they announced that was, that's uh, that's besides the fact. Definitely Doritos. Definitely Doritos. Totino's pizza Totino's rolls pizza probably. Rolls. probably. Uh, what's a good musical act? Uh, Zed. Zed will be Zed there. Will be there. Awesome. The chain smoke. You fucking better believe George, the chain smokers are I gamers. Don't, I don't want you to. Pr- like put that out there that chain smokers. There will is show a up. PSVR experience chain smokers thing that's coming out, so you can look forward I am to now that. Seeing <laughs> when I'm watching this conference at your place, like I've always done, <laughs> that during like fucking Ubisoft's conference when they're talking about just dance, the chain smokers will go out there and be like, "Yo, let's dance." Can you really dance to the chain smokers music though? They other than just... solemnly like move around. That's what they. It's dance music. That's why I don't get it. I don't get their music. It's dance it's music. Dance music, but it's like sad dance. Because music. it's like, oh, it's like I have to dance because that's the only. Everyone thing in I their 20s is impressed. So but they I don't move it. I guess I don't know. Jason Derulo. I think does Jason Derulo got a new album again? Maybe bring Probably, out. Probably I don't know. Bring out uh, Lil Yachty. I don't know someone and someone that's cool with the kids. Anyway, so yeah, that's what we're adding to Chance E3. That rapper. Chance that rapper exists. Chance that rapper will be there. Yeah. Um, guarantee that. Um, actually, I don't think... He doesn't seem like the shill kind of guy. I don't know. I actually idea. know he has a Kit Kat commercial, but that was a pretty good Kit Kat commercial. I, I don't know nothing about him. So. Uh, okay, he's got a three on his hat. Anyways. Okay. So that's what's happening. It seems that there's not really... They haven't really announced that they're live... Because Jeff Keighley does his usually live stream on YouTube, so I don't know if like the prime YouTube E3 thing is going to be this... Like Jeff, like talking to people, and maybe they're gonna stream the panels. I don't know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, we might be, we might have a fucking fire festival situation here, where it's a complete fucking disaster, <laughs> oh, and everyone that. was like, "I'm trapped in the Konami booth. Please send help. They won't let me stop playing Super Bomberman R." <laughs> so that could be a possibility. Oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be pretty good. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Cause this, and this doesn't get you into the press. This isn't involved with the press conference because those are completely separate. Those oh, are yeah. like. Those have Different always been a separate. There's always been a separate thing, been a separate thing. Uh, and who knows? I don't even know if I don't wonder if Nintendo is going to play ball with this. It doesn't seem like like a thing that Nintendo would play ball. Then Nintendo is mean, not listed in this list of people. They'll probably have like they always have like a an area. Yeah, I know that's true. I doubt, it's always I doubt, impossible I doubt, to get in. I doubt in. they'll have a comp any like press thing because they don't do no. that anymore. Like Reggie will probably show up at, at Jeff Keighley's thing and be like, and Jeff will be like, huh, what's with the with the with the Mother Three pin? He's like, huh, well, Jeff, here in Nintendo, we're like big fans. Fuck with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, look forward to the E3 Coliseum. E3 is a month away. It is. Man, we should have probably made an E3 predictions thing if we were a prepared podcast. That's what we would have done. But look, man, we can do that. We we got time. Sure, I predict. Do you think NAC two is gonna be on stage? Pro- definitely. I forgot that NAC two is a thing. What's okay? Give me, give me your wild shot prediction right now. Um, because I already thought of mine. Sure, let's th- let's do. Actually, I'm not really. There's not really anything I'm looking forward to in E three. I think actually. This I year. don't know. I I, want, I just want to see more Mario. I just want Mario. That's I literally the only that. game. Mario. I totally understand that. And maybe uh, some. I actually, I want to see more. Uh, Nintendo is actually the thing I'm most interested yeah. in. Yeah. Nintendo. My big thing is I want to know about Fire Emblem Warriors. Because Hyrule sure. Warriors was great. It's going to be it. Yeah. I want to figure out if that Pokemon Star scene is real. That that's I am interested in that. Make and then my wild po- shot is I really think Okami might be you coming said, back. Yeah, you said that. I want it to be back. Platinum Games definitely needs to work. Look. Their offices are very nice, by the way. I saw a documentary are, of them. They're really nice. And plus, they're not doing anything now. No. Skillbound's dead. I don't, so I don't they think should, they're making any more DLC for Nier. So they should definitely make Okami 3. I'm just saying that because Okami is great. Bayonetta 3. It. Sure, that's an easy guess. I'd, wonderful I'd, 101, 2. Wonderful 102. Wonderful 102. Uh, beautiful Joe HD collection. I doubt that will happen. No. I don't think they care about Beautiful Joe. But Capcom likes re-releasing things. They do. I think, why not hire them for like a port job? Do it. I don't know. 
Anyways, so uh, let me run through the actual show times because Ethan, I'm annoyed with how scattered E3 is. It's not a thing you can just sit down and enjoy this year. Oh yeah, there's always like a yeah. two hour gap between. So everything. actually, it's even bigger because everything's on Sunday, on Saturday, and what? fuck, it's Saturday and Sunday. I didn't know this. Anyways, stuff's on Saturday now. Yeah, so oh, fuck, it's EA though, so. Oh, then I'm not missing. So much. Saturday at 12 p.m. Uh, 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific time is EA Play, so. Uh, I don't know what EA has. Actually, Star Wars, games. Star Wars, Star Wars Battlefront Two will be a big thing. Yeah, probably maybe a new Star Wars game. Maybe probably. Bioware teases their new project. What's it called? It's called it's like a first name of a dude. It's like Daniel or if Steven or something. If Bioware is doing anything. <laughs> it seems like Bioware Prime is making something, okay. but not all the other studios. Who fucking knows? Okay. Turns out naming a bunch of studios by the name of of Bioware is not not only confusing, but it's hard to figure out what the hell they're working on. It's sort of Nintendo EAD, but at least they have number numbers in front of their That's name. That's true. That's true. So I guess Saturday is EA. I have weekends off, so I'll probably watch it still. Excited for Yarny 2. There you go. Yarny 2. The guys at the Colton it's, stage. It's too so- soon, George. They need to take their time with Yarny. It's been He's two years. a delicate ye- boy. No, Unravel's only a year old, honey, huh? right? Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so on Sunday uh, at 2 p.m. Pacific time is Microsoft. And then on Sunday, uh, that time, uh, there's no time on it right here, is Bethesda as well. And okay. then on Monday is probably Ubisoft and Sony. That's it. Hmm. So e- it sounds like E3 is not a fun, congestible thing. Uh, that- when did Nintendo say there's? Thing it's on be- Tuesday. It's on Tuesday. I was okay. really, really hoping they would just take a Monday slot. That way, we have more on Monday. I mean, I don't think they they knew everyone else would move their stuff so far ahead, which is weird because it's usually Monday and Tuesday. It's mm-hmm. usually just Monday. And it was Sunday because of Bethesda, but now oh, yeah, Mi- but now should- Microsoft's doing Sunday morning, and then can't they just like not? Microsoft's the one I understand. But then, because I think they've always felt like they go early in the morning, and mm-hmm. then PlayStation end caps it, and then everyone forgets what Microsoft did. Yeah. And according to Jason Schreier, Jason Schreier made a, a fucking comment, like, I was like, I don't want to expect much from that Microsoft conference, by the way. Oh, weekend. no. Remember last year when the Microsoft conference completely leaked out 10 minutes before it started? I would love it if that happened again. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Uh, so, yeah, that's... So, have uh, fun. Laura Kate Dale just gets a Project Scorpio. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, crazy, look at this. So, yeah, look forward to trying to watch all these conferences and all these fucking weird-ass times. So that's fun. Ryan, you alluded to Bioware. Maybe not having anything to show. Bioware released a game called Mass Effect Andromeda. It was not received well, both what? financially and critically. What what could have possibly gone wrong with that? And Everyone seemed... was so looking forward to the game that they spent like five years making. Yeah. And so according to a report from Kotaku, it seems like Bioware Montreal is restructuring. A lot of people from the team are being taken out and being put to other stuff like EA Motive, who was working on the Star Wars stuff. And uh-huh. Bioware Prime to work on whatever their big fucking project is that like I think it's supposed to be like a Destiny sort of thing a connected service thing because hmm. that's what's hot uh, so guess. yeah I don't know what else to say about that that's just the thing it's kind of sad it's all the fans fault right I mean sure I mean it's it's kind of sad it is sad yeah it's kind of sad to be like well this team is fucking being scattered to the wind at least they still all have jobs yeah, totally. At least they all have jobs. You probably get to work on a Star Wars. Uh, it's partially what I'm interested in is what happened to Dice, whatever Dice Studio that worked on Mirror's Edge, because you'd imagine that happened. To, they're like, well, you're working on Battlefront Two as well. Everyone working on Battlefront Two. Everyone, Mitch Dyer, IGN Damn. joint. Really excited. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, Ryan. Oh jeez. Ryan, do you remember 2012 and you bought a Wii U and you were so excited? For yes. Dark Siders 2. You were very excited for Dark Siders 2 and you played it, you completed it, and you know, this is a better game than Zelda has ever is the best Zelda game ever. Let me made. let me let me backtrack for you there, George. <laughs> and I did I did play that game and I played about ten minutes and then went back to the store because it was horseshit. Because <laughs> it was it, it's like Zelda if Zelda was also not Zelda but God of War and also just the, like edgy like edgelord shit this place is this is no place for a horse this is no place for a horse but anyway well it's good news ryan what they're what? making a new dark game i thought i was saved so this is probably the weirdest thing 
I think was it last year? Last year that Nordic THQ, changed their name THQ to THQ. Was pretty much back, right? Yeah, THQ's back. Dark Siders, the Blob. I want to play the Blob on your PC. No, the I don't. Blob, what's out? The Blob oh, is back, baby. Talk about a game that disappointed a child. Dark Siders still coming. Dark Siders Remastered still coming to Wii U. We got all our we got all our pinnacle franchises: the Blob and Dark Siders. Two very very different games, and they're yeah. coming back. I, I assume Red Faction's coming at some point. Oh God! Please no. Uh, Agents of Mayhem. Oh wait, that was a, that's a deep show. Right? Anyways, Dark Siders Three is happening. Being made by Gunfire Games, who is made out of people who used to work at Vigil at THQ, who worked on the Dark Siders series. These people remind me of the Homefront: The Revolution sort of thing, where it's a bunch of people <laughs> that were that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. Uh, sure, like a bunch of people that were like pushed around because Vigil, uh, like Dark Siders Two, came out right about the time like it's over, like THQ is closing down. And so I feel like a lot of that, and the game was received well. Like a lot of people liked Dark Siders Two a lot. Oh yeah. And it was weird because you were like, surely someone's gonna pick up the Dark Siders team, right? And then no well, one, no did. one did. Yeah. No one did. No. And so I, th- I think I saw an interview with the people, and they were like, yeah, we felt we we're like, we got like an 8.0 and all this shit. We will pick us up, right? Nope. Okay. Well. Because Dark Siders was always that thing that like it was received well, but I feel like a, not a lot of people. Yeah, everyone like, was like, people will play it, but it doesn't have like brand recognition. Yeah, no one's like, oh god, Dark Siders. Gotta get that Dark Siders too. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. What what was it called? War Mastered Edition. The that's new the ones? new one. That's the remastered. That's yeah. So. Stupid. It's coming to Wii U this month, I think. Actually, it's coming to Wii U. I told you, like, oh, I got a press man. release from them that was like, fans have come to us saying that they're they're wondering if the Dark Siders War Masters is I still have, coming to Wii U. I have Dark Siders One on my PC, and I also got the War Master Edition on my PC for free. So I was like, uh, no, I don't want well, it. Well, it's here. still coming to Wii U. It's on my Steam account now. Probably at 30 frames per second. Well, actually, no. Dark Siders was a PS3 game, so we'll probably run them all. But anyways, because this studio, once it was broken down from THQ. They were purchased by Crytek, mm-hmm. and they and then Crytek had actually this was obviously part of the whole Crytek stopped paying their employees, and I think this oh, was yeah. a studio that was like fuck that, and they just walked out. They just walked the fuck out. They didn't even close the studio. They just walked That's the metal fuck as hell. out. Well, like like I, like they We're weren't not- getting paid. <laughs> they were getting paid, and they were like yeah. So whatever, guys, let's just leave. Oh. That sounds awesome. And then they left. Uh, and then they made Gunfire Games, and they made a, a, an Oculus launch game. What was it called? I, I can't remember. But it was like this sort of third-person action-adventure game that was pretty good. Chronos? Yeah, that's what it was called. It was called Chronos. Hmm. Um, and yeah, here they are, making Dark Siders 3. And they even talked about Dark Siders 4 in, in some press. Oh, come on. So they're really excited to be back at Dark Siders. So. This is like some Mighty Number no. 9 kind of shit. Like, we have so much mapped up with the Dark Siders franchise. It's like, guys, just focus on one thing. <laughs> what the fuck time, is okay? going on over there, concept? Don't worry about it. Where's that 3DS and Vita Who cares? Okay. It, it, it <laughs> so didn't anyway. even run on the PC. You want to? You think it'll run on the Vita? I don't know. It finally hit 60 frames at PS4 Pro. That's all I'm saying. Okay, great. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, Dark Souls Three. Uh, you play as uh, was it? R- it's a girl. Fury? Now. Yes, Fury. Because it was like, it was like the four plagues or whatever. That was like there was like death and then war and i think this one's fury and i think they took off famine because they couldn't do anything with famine so they do they're war or not fury you're playing as this uh the female personification of fury and she's a dark sider person and she's gonna go on an adventure she's one of those dark sider boys she looks a lot like the character from rising zero dawn if she had like some a very thick cat eye uh makeup on uh, so Dark Souls Three. Look forward to 2018. I think is their uh, date for that one. Thank God. I wonder if it'll be at E3. Maybe. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think this was just like IGN first. Sure, here you go. IGN first. This no. This will be the one that we see ads for every time they take a break between press conferences. Dark Siders Three. Dark it's back, And they'll play baby. the same fucking trailer. So. Oh. Anyways, George, I'm not. I'm now not looking forward to E3 because of all this. <laughs> uh, we got even more beebs. It's sponsored by Dark Siders I'm Three. A, I'm personally pretty bummed out the how spread out it is. But yeah, that that does suck. Anyways, anyways, on a sort of like a more kind of lighter, serious note, Genyo Takeda, a long, long time Nintendo employee. He's sort of those names that you hear a lot 
around like press releases and interviews but you don't really know a lot like people know like Gunpei Yokoi and I think people know him because he's so synonymous with the Game Boy yeah uh but Genyo Takeo you see his name like on like I think he was on even involved with Mario Run but he's he was like sort of the lead on one of the leads on the Wii he made a punch out he's with the company for a long time but just very quickly he retired uh at the age of 68 um that was just the thing I wanted to say. Mostly, I wanted mostly because I feel like a lot of the higher up Nintendo news has been pretty depressing. Yeah, lately. So it was just nice to see someone retire, uh, and someone who's like pretty valuable for the company too. Oh yeah. So that was just a quick thing I wanted to drop in there because yeah. Again, I'm not 100 percent familiar with him, but I've always you always hear his name. Oh always yeah. A lot of those name. higher up Nintendo people like they don't they don't like to get their names out yeah. there. It's pretty much just like Miyamoto. And What's the Wazimata. name of the new guy for the uh, directs? I forget his name. Oh, the new guy for the directs. Oh, I can't remember. Okay. Yeah, but he's sort of becoming a f- sort of a figure for the company because oh, yeah. he's sort of taken over for the du- the face of the direct as oh, this yeah. fun loving guy. He's doing uh, a very good job. I think yeah, he's doing a very good job. Anyways. This is a very me story. Oh, yeah. Night Trap is coming uh, to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And it has, like, three different box arts, right? Yes, Limited Run is doing a physical edition for Night Trap, which is back in the year 2017, baby. The game that that broke video games at its time. For a little bit, yeah. For some reason. If you don't know what Night Trap is, Night Trap was this game for the Sega CD. It was sort of the big game for the Sega CD where you uh, play as this special forces unit who has cameras all over this house and these girls are having a slumber party yes and then a bunch of i don't want to spoil you don't want vampires techno vampires come into the house of the girls having their slumber party and they try to kidnap them and take their blood and whatever the hell and so you're in these cameras switching off to try and catch them and trap them and this, with Mortal Kombat and Doom, made a huge outcry for vi- violence in video games. Like, they're fucking ruining everything. Yeah, in this game, like, the big thing was like, oh, it's, there's, it's, it's, there's girls in underwear just running around. Not even. They're just, like, fucking hanging out being girls. I know. And they're just fucking hanging out with, singing. like, the most 80s acting ever. Yeah, and I think, I think people, were just, people were like, oh, this is this is bad. Video games, that we, video we, games got, are we gotta regulate this stuff. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, yes, it is coming out digitally on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and Limited Run is doing a physical edition that has a Sega CD variant, a Sega CD 32X variant, and the original Sega CD variant. You can see what all the hubbub was about, and maybe it's not living up to that. Who knows? So here's the thing, Night Trap, I tried to play Night Trap again on a Sega CD 32X emulator. It is not the best game, but if the game has a, a way that, like, an autoplay feature where it just plays the game... I would. That's fine. Oh yeah, just to see. Because what... I remember, it's 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 hard to see the cues where you where you have to hit, and like yeah, it's really hard to yeah, it's a hard game that doesn't make much mm-hmm. sense. Uh, somehow, like yeah. a lot of games of its time, you really like had to keep playing it to like really like be good at it. That game was not originally made for the Sega CD, but I can't remember who it was made for. A console that got canceled, and then Sega picked it up and i can't fill up cdi no Probably not. it was some was other fucking ass. weird company that i can't remember because a lot of people came with weird stuff. yeah it was that Ar- sort around of, that cd area it was that cd yeah. area that everyone was like here's this company you gotta throw their hat and they're in the apple pippin let me tell you oh, about it geez. dragon ball z creative art studio let me tell you about it anyways um the thing with being a podcast that talks about the old stuff because I don't know like, we love the old we stuff. like talking about news things because we're guys about who like video games who have opinions and shit on the internet. If you is say the, so. Is that sometimes we some stuff just feels really outdated? Like this feels really outdated to me. Talk about it, but the, I forgot about this. Too, yeah, to be honest with you. Uh, the NES Classic got discontinued. It did, and then they sold about two million units, which. People are like, that's not a lot. That's something not a lot. How really many they could? They could have sold easily ten million. Oh, but. I know. Anyways, but with that, Eurogamer did a report that uh, the SNES Classic Edition is coming. I don't you know. see, like Eurogamer is really good with this stuff, but I kind of don't believe this because, like, it my, makes too much sense. It makes too much sense, and also <laughs> I feel like Nint- the reason Nintendo discontinued the NES Classic is because they want people to buy those classics on the Nintendo Switch. I don't think so. Because I feel like once they do Virtual Console on the Switch, it's going to be like a huge, like a, a, a lot of stuff at once. I can go either way on this one, actually. Yeah. I can believe it and I cannot believe it. And honestly, I don't care. 
I will buy a SNES one though. I will definitely I, buy a SNES I want a one. But the thing is, is the same thing with the mini. I just I want it to be a Japanese Super Famicom because it That's looks way true. cooler than the yeah. And I like the fucking purple and dumb gray box. Like I have some nostalgia for it. But I'd rather have the cool rainbow color controller instead of the fucking purple. That's right. true. The SNES one didn't have the microphone in it, did it? No, that was just the NES. That was just the NES that had a microphone. Yeah. They ditched that for the other. What a shame. Yeah, I don't think there's much. The NES one also had those weird cords like in like the top like corners. The ones of that it. were hooked up they permanently were... to it? Yeah, they were hooked up permanently to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. awesome. I'm not going to be the fucking normie-ass video game person and be like, Ryan, what are your top 30 games on your SNES? But all I care about it would be like, I don't even care about Mario World that much. To be honest with you, no. I just want a in I'll, a dream world it would have Mario All Stars, and that's fact, all I care about. All I want actually is a good way, an, a, a good way to play that feels kind of organic to play Chrono Trigger yeah. and Final Fantasy VI because I haven't played. I tried to play Final Fantasy VI, but the way I played it wasn't great. I want a cool way that kind of replicates the feeling of playing it on an original SNES. If I could play Final Fantasy VI, which is a game I've wanted to play forever, which mm-hmm. like you can't really like, unless you have the original. Game, S- they have S- that S- or the Game Boy Advance version, which isn't. It's it does not. This it's got I, a Game Boy Advance color palette, which bothers yeah. me personally. Because yeah. the version I was playing was the PS One re release on a Vita, ooh, ooh. and so the thing is that it has PS One loading time, so the loading is slow. Yeah. But the, it looks really crisp, but the loading kills it. Um, so and also all the like the like iPhone version of Final Fantasy VI oh, is fuck re- me. Looks real bad. It's really bad. Um, I don't know why they don't just stick with what worked originally, but you know whatever. Anyway, yeah, I, I agree. With that. I would I would only care about Final Fantasy VI. To be honest I don't care you. about the RPGs. Like Super Mario RPG, that'd be neat. Uh, I love Earthbound again. I need. I, sure, I, another way to play Earthbound. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, I guess that's it. I just, I would just be more willing to play Super Nintendo games than I would be NES games. Uh, yeah, I feel like Super Nintendo games have more uh, to them. I think so as well. Anyways, let's talk about the inevitable the Star Wars Battlefront Two. How do you feel about it, Ryan? And and does it have a VR thing? No, they haven't announced a VR thing. Well, I don't care then. I mean, you can play a VR thing right now for it, can you? Or do you, I, oh, you need I, Star Wars Battlefront. I had, I had to buy Star Wars Battlefront. I don't care yeah. enough to do that. Chris Remo had a writing part in that game who did the music for Firewatch and Gone Home. That's a weird huh. thing. Interesting. That's a weird thing. Anyways, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Launches in November. It's got a single player campaign. Finally. It's being written by Mitch Dyer and Walt Whitman. Uh, Mitch Dyer of IGN, of course. And. Walt Whitman, who wrote Spec Ops The Line, which people really like Spec Ops The Line. Can't uh, you play in, like, all three, like, timelines, pretty much? Like, the yes. original prequel and the sequel It's got story. Darth Maul. Nice. Everyone loves Darth Maul. It's got, he uh... He had that really cool moment where he opened his blade and opened twice, then he died immediately because yeah, he's actually overrated. The Gungans, probably. You can oh. kill some Gungans. Oh, if people could kill some Gungans, they'd be real happy about that. Uh, you kill those shitty fucking skinny droids. The, oh yeah, the ones that are like paper. Yeah, although I like the little rolly droids. I those like, like those. Those, too. those are very cool. I like those. I hope those are in the game. Like say what you about episode one, but they had those are some good toys. I think yeah, I, I like I like kid. the roly poly guys a lot. You made some good That's toys. What I have to say. Just watching the movie sucks. So Star Wars Battlefront two. I hope it's good. I didn't like Star Wars Battlefront one much. I tried to play it and I didn't like it. That's all. I thought it because it really just is that one online thing. And yeah, I didn't be into that. It did not do anything for me. I would like it feels it's been a long time since we had a single player Star Wars game, so I'm interested in the campaign. I'll probably play it. But honestly, I I'm don't really care. Ever since Star Wars came back, I was like, okay. And I'm done. I just needed yeah. the one I just needed the one high of like re watching like a new Star Wars movie. Now I'm like, okay, it's here now, I guess. Yeah. I, I get know. that. I'm I'm just more interested in what the other studios are doing with Star Wars. Me too. Because I don't care about Star Wars Battlefront. I don't care about. You can guns. play it in third person. Yeah, but like, I just want to. Just let me have a lightsaber. That's all <laughs> I've cared about as a kid—a lightsaber. And you can kind of do that, but the main focus is like guns. Star Wars Republic Command. That's pretty good. First person Star Wars game. It's. They're, they're all just pretty good, George. <laughs> they're all just pretty good. I want one that's actually good. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Give me that. Come on. <sighs> is that too much to ask for? Yes. That's fair. 
Anyways, let's wrap up here. There was a direct, but honestly, there's not a lot of things I can remember about it, so we're going to... It was just release dates for yeah. Switching and Arms. I hope you like uh, and yellow Joy. Joy-Cons. Box Box Boy came out, but you probably already know that. Ever Oasis, a game by Gru. Uh, not to be confused, boy, the Despicable Me character, Gru. We will not talk about that uh, not on this podcast. Splatoon 2 has got a horde mode. It's like it, I really like their hub mode. It's like zombies, but they're fucking shrimp. It's awesome. Uh, and there's so a new cute. 2DS XL. Oh yeah, that, which is that a, was announced in the direct. That was no, a was after thing. that, which is a 2DS, but with the new 3DS stuff without the 3D. Ryan, it, how do you feel about this one? It looks really good. Like I love the look of it. It's all matte. It's all pretty. I love how they. I wish we got the Japanese white and orange one. That one looks sick Really? I don't like that one as much. Really? I love I that one. I don't like the orange part. Oh. If it was white and something else, maybe. But, like, the 3DS family of systems, which, yes. for one, is confusing whenever they mention it, it needs to just die because the Switch is out. I can't go back to watching stuff on a very small, very low-quality screen. And if I am doing that, I'm one of the weird people who like the 3D. And, like, the most appealing thing about the new 3DS is, like, how it fixed the whole, like, viewing angle thing with the 3D that was a problem with the original stuff. But it doesn't have that, and that's the one thing I care about, George. You're in the minority on that I'm in the, I'm in the big minority. But also, they stopped well, making George, games with 3D. They did, but which is a shame because, like, Mario 3D World and Link Between Worlds had really, really great 3D. And then nothing else came out from that, and that's a huge shame. Mm-hmm. I'm sad because 3D could have been cool and it was for a very small fraction of time, at least in terms of video games. But you know what? Whatever. All right. Well, that's all the news. I don't think we need to talk about Hey Pikmin or another Yoshi game yeah, that came out. You, you've or... probably already listened to enough podcasts talk about Hey Pikmin. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. As a, that Fire Emblem game's coming. I keep hearing that like from people who have played it in like, previews, it's a lot better the Yoshi's New Island, which it's the same team. Right, yeah. Which is good, because Yoshi's New Island is... A bad video bad, game. bad video game, yeah. Anyways, we'll be right back with the games of... Uh, what's the month? April. April That's what it is. a bit of May. Because... A bit of... Right, because we're late, baby. Yeah. Welcome back. You folks didn't hear Ryan make an embarrassing reference in the oh, early man. 2000s. It was just look at me. I'm, insane. I'm such an embarrassing guy. Look just, at me. I'm yeah, crazy. look at it. Point and laugh at this clown. Please everyone. do so. Lower my self-esteem even more. I want it to happen. Anyways, let's uh, talk about the hot new game. Everyone's talking about it. Tetris. The Entropy, Poyo Poyo Tetris. Tetris only. That's oh, it. No. Okay. Let's talk about finally our national crisis is over. Three years later, Puyo Puyo Tetris is finally... By the way, we're going to talk about the games of May. Or I mean, not May. April. God damn it, I did it. See, I told myself I wasn't going to do it. You did. You... And I did it. And I fucked up. Now you... who's now who's the laughed one? It's, it's me. you now. That's who. Everyone, avert your laughs. Change that comment from Ryan to George, because he is the fool. <sighs> Let's talk about Puyo Puyo Tetris. Puyo Puyo Tetris. We both played this game. Yes! Because it came out on the Switch and the PS4. Finally! Puyo Puyo Tetris is a game that people is a highly imported game mm-hmm. because it is a very very good video game that came out in Japan in 2013 on the Vita, Xbox One, and PS4, and it is now here in the states only on PS4 and a brand new Switch version. And Hell it is a yeah. very good ass video game. Oh, yes. It is a game I look at and I'm like, P- very smart people made this fucking game. Oh like, yes, it is a very very good fucking video game. Um, but also Puyo Puyo Tetris. Half of that is Tetris, and I don't know how to play Tetris. You don't? I suck at Tetris. I suck at Puyo Puyo. Well, most people suck at Puyo Puyo because they never yeah. played it, so that's fair. I've played Dr. Eggman's Mean Bean. Oh, you yeah, have, so you know. You so all know. I, I, I you know should that, know all about it. I know that Puyo Puyo life. I'm just bad at it. Mm hmm. You didn't play Puyo Puyo on the DS? Was the other release? I think. I don't think, it, I don't think that came out. I think, I think there's two that came here. Hmm. I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was a Dreamcast game. My only experience, because I picked it up and I was like, this is Dr. Eggman's Mean Bean Machine. This is Dr. Eggman's Mean Machine. Crazy. I played that game. But yes, this is a Sega-developed game that combines Tetris and the word of Tetris and Sega's Puyo Puyo, or Puyo Pop, depending on whatever you want to call it, which I don't know really how to describe Puyo Puyo. It's like 
little small blob bean things that you that have are one to of five colors. They're one of five colors that you don't have to. Co- that you have to connect in f- fours. In fours, yeah. By I can't remember. Is it anyway? As long as they're all it's, touching, it, right? As long as they're all touching, anyway. And the and that one Puyo Puyo is basically a game of chains. So you want to set yourself up to build really good chains yeah. because. Like te- in Tetris, you can also cl- just do like single fucking like row wipes, but, but that's... like the main thing is you want to get a Tetris, yeah. which is four lines and at once. Or if you're like me and suck, you just start with like, please just clear some shit off the fucking board because I can't. But yeah, anyways, yeah, it's it's weird to talk about this game because it's it really is just a fantastic puzzle game. Like, it's, oh yeah, you're like this is probably one of the best puzzle games ever made. Like, it's so like there's so many ways you could like fuck up like because. It's not just you're playing Tetris and Puyo. Sometimes you're playing both combined. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're playing Tetris and then it switches to Puyo Puyo. That's my favorite. And thing. sometimes just crazy fucking shit happens. Like I've seen some stuff in the story mode that just looks bananas. I don't even know what's happening in that nonsense. Like stuff's coming at you fast and like things, shapes change and all this nonsense. And there's a story mode. Man. Story mode, from what I've heard, is like weirdly well written and funny. It's weird that a they wrote a story mode for a Tetris game. But and Puyo Puyo, B translated it and yeah. C voice acted. Oh it. yeah, it's super weird. And there's a character named Tetris or Tess. His name is Tess, and okay. he is the leader of the Tetris crew. I don't know. Is Coconut Gun can shoot? Yeah, that's a Donkey Kong sixty four joke for all you nineties kids out there. Oh jeez. But yeah, Ryan, what, what do you what do you have to say about Puyo Puyo Tetris? I haven't talked about it with it's, you. It's it's weirdly fun. I started with the demo, and the demo is... You're like, playing on Switch, right? I'm playing on the Switch. Duh. Yeah. Duh. And it, it really works well on the Switch, because you can, like, hand the Joy-Cons to someone else, and then you can play co-op with someone. I've yeah. done that at, like, work, and, like, when we're not doing anything. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Just play some Poi Poi Tetris. And then you get really annoyed, and then you just start having fun. Because I'm weirdly... I don't think I'm, like, great at Tetris, but I played it a lot as a kid, so I'm, like, kind of good at it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, doing that's fun. Did you I, play the Game Boy version when you were younger? Yeah. Oh, okay. The OG. Game Boy version. I had um, a DS version for a while. The DS version of Tetris, if I remember, was fucking kick-ass. It was. That was it the was Nintendo great. one, right? Yes. Yeah, that one's fucking dope. Mm-hmm. That's a dope Tetris version. Uh, but, yeah. But, I, yeah, this is just, like, a perfect, like, Switch puzzle game. I yeah, thought. I agree. Because you can take it anywhere. Mm-hmm. You can, like do stuff really fast because it's Tetris. I think it's probably the best version because I, I would also, I, I originally would have said the Japanese Vita version, but this is a version, like you said, it's got two controllers. You just pop them out like, hey, you want to yeah. play some Tetris, whatever, in this Japanese puzzle game? We can just play Tetris fine. You don't have to play the bean game, <laughs> whatever. We don't have to play Dr. Eggman Mean Bean Machine. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but that would yeah. have been a better title, Doctor Eggman's Mean Bean Machine mm-hmm. Tetris. Yeah, I think it's a yeah, sure, yeah. That'd be a good title. Doctor Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean, not even Doctor Eggman. Doctor Robotnik's. Oh mean yeah, bean it was ma- Robot. Doctor Robotnik's ver- Mean Bean Machine versus Tetris. Hell yeah. Uh, it's, so, I want that box art. Yeah. Uh, how do you did you play much of the story mode at all? No. No, really. No. I feel like I'm the only person who like, really I kinda, likes I kinda, the story mode. I kind of dropped it once this other game came out. You don't know anything about Carbuncle? Carbunk? No. I'm really? Sorry. Oh, he says uh, goo goo. Goo goo, baby. Yeah, that's exactly. What he oh says. hell yeah. Yeah, that's a it's a great it's also a great like uh launch window switch game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Let me join the PS4. PS4 is good. It's just like it's not this. Being you can't able, take it. It's a game that's really good portable. I mm-hmm. find so that's why I like highly recommend it for it Nintendo is a... Switch people who are looking for just something like yeah. easy and it's fine if you want to wait. For it to be a little bit cheaper. See, that's the thing. Bucks a little bit. I think that's a. I think it's. A, I haven't seen it any, is a great deal. Like once you like have it, and like once you know it's in. I there. guess the idea, like I'm paying thirty dollars for a Tetris game. Yeah. It can seem weird, but like it's like a, I think because us. There's like, a crazy amount of like different modes there's in this depth, game, and there's a lot of game like, replayability. And, oh, like yeah. you can play like you could have that game forever. Like that's just this is like a fucking great ass Tetris game. Yeah, I played like the Tetris on the OG Game Boy for like five years. Yeah. That's an. It's just one thing. Mm-hmm. And then you go online and just get fucking Oh, yeah, you nuked. go online and then I just never get wrecked. I don't even want to know <laughs> how bad I would be online. Uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris. Import it's a, game. It's a surprisingly great game. Sega. Let me tell you about it. Another Sega game, another import title is Persona 5. Perhaps the most anticipated Japanese title this year. I was going to say in a while, but I was going to say Final Fantasy 15 came yeah. out. Yeah. 
Persona 5, it is finally here. I George's am... favorite game of all time is Persona 4. Yes, Persona 4 Golden is one of my favorite. It is my favorite game of all time. And yet, for some reason... I have not played Persona 5 yet. I have it. And I have played a lot of Persona 5. Yeah, you've played a shit ton of I Persona I have 50 hours in right now. So you're like 30 hours away from the ending? 40 Pro- hours? Probably, I don't know. So Ryan, Persona 5 is yes. here. You have the fresh perspective. A lot of people are experiencing... This is their first Persona game. Oh, yeah. So it's interesting to see, in general online, the, the opinions on this game. Because we have a first... This is the first Persona game to go mainstream. And there's a lot of people who, like, play the other games. Because and... Persona 4 Golden didn't really, like, hit off because it was a Vita if game. If anything, that's the most popular one. Because I think... Because that's, like, what people who owned a Vita bought. Exactly. Vita 4, yeah. Uh, and, like, yeah, people bought that for... People bought a Vita to play Persona 4 Golden. And that... It is, it is weird to see, like, that's the game where it got momentum. For mm-hmm. some reason, that Vita version... I think it must have been, like, people who had a Vita. Uh, like, that game really... They bought it, and that game... That's a fun, again. It's that's my great, favorite game. That's a great game, and like having that like to go anywhere yeah. is great. That's like the my. I think that's the complaint. The main complaint everyone has about Persona Five that they wish it was a Switch game. I, dude, you have <laughs> no idea how how much I would love to just take that game and any, and just play it anywhere because I'm I'm so into it. So yes, Persona Five. You're playing it, Ryan. I am playing it. We established that already. So it seems like your general impression is very positive. Very very positive. Yeah, I mean. Like going into it, like, like you and I talked about Togemura sessions a lot. Yes, I love that game. And I said it is a very, it's a Persona light, and like, that's what got me into thinking, mm-hmm. like, maybe I should pick up this game that my my good friend George never shuts up about. Yeah, and can you see though? Can you see? I those? can definitely yeah, see it. Yeah, totally. Yep. And it also does a lot of things that I wish Togemura sessions did. Yeah. Especially with establishing characters and having a a main character who is a lot more like likable. Mm-hmm. There's not much I really can say because, like, a lot of, like, my positives are, like, the story. Right. So those who don't know, Persona is this sort of hybrid of a JRPG mixed with uh, maybe a light visual novel where, like, yeah. your game is going to dungeons and then when you're not in dungeons, it's hanging out with your friends, going to school, maxing your stats, getting to know these characters better, and... And then getting to know the characters better also helps you out in the dungeons. Exactly. Everything works out together mm-hmm. equally. And the game is sort of... Managing all of that because you are on a time limit for yeah, you every have section like you have like a year of time. Yeah, the game sure. spans each game spans a year, and you have like about like a month ish for each thing, like in game time, like yeah. a day, which you only have a certain amount of things you can do in each day, and sometimes your day is cut short unexpectedly. Yeah, because your cat keeps telling you to go to bed. Uh, Persona Five, and yeah, that's the game, and the the character. Well, I can't speak for Five, but like the writing of Persona has been like these characters are so interesting, and I think the combat isn't groundbreaking, but I think it's I I really like the combat because it's just it's like that kind of simple like classic JRPG. Yes, combat, it's very bare bones JRPG. Like, I miss a lot because a lot of modern JRPGs try to like do something outside of the norm but that kind of like makes the experience weird in my like that's yeah. what i didn't like about um what was it i think like final fantasy 13 does that a little bit it does that a lot um bravely default i did not like the combat in that game bravely people default does really that. like that yeah that was all the new super mario people yeah. mario games do that yeah. even though those had really great like classic jrpg style battles so and yeah but like the battle me- mechanics in persona 5 at least from what i tell are pretty like um diverse because there's a lot of different like i guess like types of enemies you know some enemies yes. are weak against mm-hmm. certain types of moves ice fire but also like nuclear and psychic yep. attacks mm-hmm. and so you want to like tokyo mirage sessions you might want to use a certain party member to attack that you like everyone else will have to do an attack like uh basic whatever the hell but yeah, you might want to buff that character mm-hmm. or put an enemy to sleep or you know, exactly yeah yeah and keep track of that although or, do the other persona games have guns three does in three, three does. you shoot yourself in the head to release your persona i heard about that yes in this game it's an app it's a smartphone nice app. cool good, know, great right? awesome wait you have that's like you sound the persona the, the phone yeah 
What the fuck? I thought you like had like a mask or whatever the hell, and like you ripped it off. Some cool uh, that's shit. how you do it at first. But oh. like to get into like the Persona world, you like press like an app on your I guess phone, that makes sense. and then you instantly are like that. There's TV in the last but, one. But when you first go there and you like earn your Persona, you have the mask and you rip it off, and that's how you get all your magical fun superpowers. Okay. So Ryan, so is it, how are the characters in the world of Persona Five like, treating you? For what, like. I've heard, like, you've told me you've heard mixed things, but I'm talking... I have, yes. But from people who's their first one, I've heard nothing but positive things. Yeah, that's my thing. Like, I love all these characters. Mm -hmm. Like, the first guy I meet, Ryuji, he's, like, a fun, happy, like, if Naruto was cool kind of guy. He does look a lot in He looks, like, a lot, and he has the same, like, personality as Naruto. Uh, And I... And also, all the characters, like, you are, like, unsure about them at first, but then as you get to know them, you, like, really, like learn about who they are and you start to like them and they all develop like nice arcs throughout the game and for me that's like the biggest thing is like these characters i like love them a lot like really a lot so like my whole driving force is like to like just like learn more about these characters like you would like a tv show or an anime Mm -hmm. and i think like what separates persona for me especially like persona is a long burn like oh yeah you start with like it kind of almost does feel like you've been with these characters for a year yeah like you go through these relationships and the story, and it all unfolds in a fucking year. And so there's a lot of dialogue, and there's a lot of character development that goes on. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, that's the stuff that really resonated with me in Persona. Because like, if you like this and you're in it, like, it's very easy to get enraptured by it. Yeah. For specifically, I can only speak for four. Uh, you ever played three? I played a bit of three, but I think yeah. I started playing it like right after four. And I was like, "Oh, I this can see." This isn't it. as good as. What I, well, no, it was mo- It was mostly it. the like the gamey stuff. Like when you go oh, to a okay. sequel, a sequel, like they tweak some stuff. Like, yes, this is a better way to approach this thing. And mm-hmm. Persona Five, I've heard, does it as well. Because in Persona Five, correct me if I'm wrong, it tells you how many days you have left until. Because you need uh, there's this thing called the calling card, correct? That yes. you need to send out to fight the final boss, and you need a day before the last day. Right. Um, I've never like waited that long. Oh, okay, so my, you don't know. My friend warned me about that, but from what I can tell, you can go the whole days, and you, and if you don't do the calling card, you have to start over. Right. And like like I said, there are there's time limits to when you can accomplish your goals. Mm-hmm. If you miss this time limit, it's game over. Uh. So yes. So but, the whole thing is like, do I want to like do this, accomplish my task right away, or do I want to like do high school stuff mm-hmm. for a bit? instead and yeah. like raise my stats get to know these characters better but persona 5 has an actual counter right yes persona 4 did not have a counter and neither did persona 3 hmm. it would work like as soon as it starts as soon as the fog rolls in or some like arbitrary thing where like you kind of knew how many t- how much time you had but you weren't sure and so that's like that's you like see, the sort of thing and persona 5 like without giving heavy spoilers like whenever there's like a thing that you have to do it's always set up in a way like, hey, if you don't, if you don't stop me before this date, they don't. Ex- the villains don't explicitly say that, but if you don't stop me before this date, this will happen. Yeah, but but what my point is like that sort of and quality then that's of like, yeah. okay, then I then we all need to do this before yeah. then. But like I was saying, like that sort of quality of life stuff was missing from three to mm-hmm. four, and that's why I couldn't get into three. Not only because it was more persona right after four, but also because like the stuff that made four a bit better wasn't in three and that threw me off Mm -hmm. but i actually right now i'm actually at a point where i'm more interested in playing three than i am five really yes Mm -hmm. mostly because and i think because it's people who like who like rank five as like their least favorite persona i think and i think i think that's really the only reason also because in three the psp version you can play as a girl really yes and a a lot of people's problem with persona is that it's kind of its characters are kind of homophobic some yeah I mean that, and that, it's it's all like there like is, there's only there's a straight game we're straight straight club only here guys. I totally understand that like criticism. But, and it's like, frustrating. It is frustrating, but it is a Japanese game, and they don't. I have know, the and same, that's the thing that's so frustrating. And they about have the it. same like they have different culture yeah, stuff. That's fucking, us. Yeah, but that is but the whole Japanese culture thing is what I also find super interesting because you really do learn a lot about like that's Japanese. what I felt about four, and that's yeah. what the thing that worried me about the localization because. Four specifically, and I think we, this is getting really deep in it because four had this tone that I'm worried why five I'm not gonna like as much. I'm sure I'm gonna like five. I think it was gonna be a great game, but some people have already talked about this. Like four was this game where you come to this small town in like nowhere Japan, 
uh-huh. right? It's like this small town. You have one store, we have the school, and we have this. And it was meeting these people who they're small. You're just like you're entering their lives and their normal lives. Like they just hang out. They run their grandma's store or whatever the hell. Mm-hmm. It felt like a sort of vacation. And the, the problems were very small. And it was just like, we're hanging out in the countryside. Yeah. And five is more like we're in Tokyo, right? It's Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's about a big city. And you're a school student, but it's also dealing with big things. You're like taking, again, I don't think this is, I think this is pretty clear. You're taking down shitty people. You're taking down yeah. people who are like fucking over like young people specifically, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in four, there's just there's just like it's all mysteries, like weird people. It's not like uh, okay. And and like the contrast is so weird because like yes, you're solving murders, but the only time it's serious is when you're into dungeons. The rest is like oh happy dory whatever the hell we're gonna go to the cornfields and do the babada festival. Ba-da. And I don't know, like that's the sort of thing I'm worried about. Five, like four felt more intimate. Felt four felt like a change of pace and like what I think of Japan. Like the stuff that it teaches you is stuff that I didn't know about because mm-hmm. it's the stuff that isn't in anime usually. Uh, and that's the stuff. And then there's this thing that like the localization's kind of wonky. So I was I was worried if that stuff was lost. The sort of Japanese what it's, insight. It is very Japanese, very insight. The most I've learned from like about Japanese is not just like exploring and like these kids talking about their lives but like also uh, learning from the professors because you take Japanese classes about Japanese things and you learn about Japanese like things in that mm-hmm. class and then you're quizzed later about yeah. it for like exams right, yeah, and yep, stuff you're quizzed then you look then it up I'm on tra- the internet because you're not taking any chances you're exactly <laughs> but like the thing about like the Oh, quick, the quick. tone and the characters right. like you're talking about is the the stories of like everything is all very like it gets dark very quick. I think it, people tell handle, me like right off the bat it's pretty dark. I don't want to spoil it, but like yeah, when you're the first like guy that you got to take down because you understand like the thing is is it Kamashita or whatever the fuck is Kamashiro? Name? Yeah, the thing is these kids they're doing what they're doing because they have problems with the way adults are. And adults aren't doing anything right, so we as the kids, we have to, like, save the day. We get to stop these bad adults from messing with our lives, that whole thing. Mm-hmm. But it takes a lot more. Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy I saw Jimmy Neutron, Neutron in the movie. There, a lot more of a serious approach to it, because mm-hmm. unlike Jimmy Neutron, there's not these, like, real stakes at this thing. Sure, yeah, I get it. And there is that whole, like, oh, we're, we're messing with these adults, or, is what we're doing, love, right? But then it takes that, like, sudden shift, like, no, this is fucking serious. Mm-hmm. There's real stuff at stake here. We gotta do this, like right off the bat. So we're like, okay, we know what we gotta do. We gotta get in it. And like every like, like, I guess like, mo- like you say it's like every month or so. There's a big like thing. But every, yeah, like, every like thing except for like one I thought wasn't handled very well. Like you understand the real stakes of this, and that helps you get to know the characters better, and then why you're why what you're doing matters, and like how that would benefit the people. Not only like the people you're close to, but like the uh, the city of Tokyo around you, mm-hmm. and how they would benefit, and like the school around you, and how they would all benefit like positively from you doing this thing that is very morally questionable. You see, it, and that it, whole thing. and in four, it's really is just about your group of friends, really. It really, and is. that's that's still a thing, like in Persona Five. Yeah, it's sure, still I'm sure all it kind of has friends. to be because that's yeah. what about it. Uh, but how are you enjoying the style of a persona? Because I personally feel like Atlas, uh, the persona team specifically, they are the most stylish. Like the UI, the soundtrack, the smallest details. Oh, yeah, to trans- that's, that's what I loved most about Tokyo Mirage like, Tokyo, It had a little bit of that, yeah. It had a lot of that. Yeah. That's what I loved about mm-hmm. it. And a lot of that does transfer over to Persona 5 a lot. The score is great. My favorite song is like... It, it plays, like, once, like, you're like, okay, we're going to finally do this. Like, when you're about to take on the final boss, it plays, like, this one song, like, on a loop that doesn't, that never stops. And it's so fucking good. And it gets you so fucking hyped for what you're about to do. Uh, the UI is really good. My only complaint about it is it's cluttered a lot. Is it? Really? Yeah, especially on the main screen because there's, like, stuff everywhere. Like, in one screen, it's, like, what day it is, what time it is, uh, the map. And it all kind of clutters everything, and that's kind of annoying. The menus and stuff and, like, the battle sequences are all very nice, but, like, the main Mm -hmm. thing is kind of cluttered. My other complaint is, like, movement feels weird. Because, like, the theme in this, I, I, from what I take, it's not the theme and like, other ones, is that they're all thieves. Right, yeah, I know. So it's, like, Sly Cooper, like, stealthy stuff. Yeah, they're, like, running really far. But the movement doesn't, like, transfer over to that 
theme very well it feels like just like any other thing because they're supposed to be like sneaking around these like areas but they're just like kind of walking it just feels like dungeon movement it just feels like dungeon movement it's kind of stiff in a weird way and i don't and that doesn't you can like hide behind stuff but that definitely feels like a a separate function from everything because like normally like if you press like a button you can like crouch and you can't even do that in this game Hmm. which is weird to me that's like a minor complaint with like the way dungeons and stuff is Hmm. but i don't know does that answer your question yeah, I don't even remember what my original question was. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, the UI is stylish stuff. UI right? is stylish. It, it, it can be a bit much so, at some point. I know you haven't finished the game. And yes. I know I've heard I've heard a lot more negative things I've heard is that towards the end of the game, it feels like the game forgot the character's motivations. Mm-hmm. So, but I guess we won't get into that because it feels like spoilery territory, even if you did know that. But um, what was that? I forgot what I was going to say. I feel like there was a point like that in like the third like act of it. Because, like, their, their methods for taking down this guy, which, like, I understood why they want to take this guy down. But there was also, like, a personal investment that they added on in that. And that felt very tacked on. And I didn't like that very a lot. It was kind of, like, boring. But then the next, like, act after that was super personal and super great and very, like, different from everything they did, like, previously. And that got me back into the game. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to keep going. Um. And correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, but you don't play a, a, a lot of JRPGs. I know you like Fire Emblem a lot, and you played the Mario games. I played a lot of them as a kid, but like as I got older, like the whole like okay. it takes they take up a lot of time. Yeah, okay, so and you're not being completely a, being, a co- being a college boy. It's hard to okay. but now that I'm not doing as much school. I'm very excited to get back into JRPGs because okay. I love JRPGs. They're great. They are. They are great. I'm in this weird thing right now mm-hmm. where I won't play anything made by not a Japanese developer because I find anything made in J- like Japanese that's good way more interesting. Like that's, Prey is out, and yeah. I kind of rather play Gravity Rush two, and I'd rather kind of play Yakuza zero, and I kind of rather play. I totally understand that. Tales of Zestaria. Anyways, but anyways, let's wrap up on Persona five. You're not finished on it, but you really like it. How I'm, high on it are you? How how high like how like. Because, well, I guess, like, because for me, I play Persona 4, and Persona 4, like, like I said, one of my favorite games in all my yeah, time. It, like, consumed How do you, for a Yeah, bit. exactly. How are you feeling on Persona? Like, I mean, I'm totally, like, consumed by it. Like, I started, like, right around, like, finals week, and, like, I, it was really hard for me to put that away for a while. Now that, like, I have a small break from school, that's, like, pretty much all I'm doing in my free okay. time is playing Persona, which, like, I love. I would be really interested to find out if you ever had the time, if you played this, and then at some point, maybe not immediately... When to play for Golden? I definitely like still. I think play you would Golden. like four as well. I think I th- I really really love four a lot. Like, I mean, clearly talking about this is making like I, like I said my expectations were already like I know this isn't gonna be four, but mm-hmm. now that I know it's for sure not four in terms of what I like about it, mm-hmm. it bums me out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm sure the game's gonna be great, and like I'm gonna love it for different reasons. Probably. Mm-hmm. But anyways, we need to move on because otherwise we're gonna talk about Persona. It'll 5 be definitely for all like fucking time. Do you plan on getting into this like this month? Getting into Persona? Maybe. I'm still playing. <sighs> school. I, I, I'm a ding dong. Decided to take ding- summer school. Oh, like what an a idiot. Fucking idiot. Uh, and I'm playing Nier. And at some point in the cast, I'm going to talk about Nier again. Once I'm completely finished with it, I'm on the second playthrough of that game. And I will be that playing the second game of Persona soon. Is in the realm of Persona 4 for me. Like, in wow. terms of like games, like, well, in the realm of like, these are my favorite games. Yeah. And I'm not done with Nier, but. There's st- it's getting there. Nier does stuff that, like, no other game does and, like, approaches subject matter and it does it with such a flair and such a fucking platinum ass. Like, when platinum does oh, something yeah. good, they it's fucking what the fuck. Uh, but anyways, moving on, because we're going to be here forever. Ryan, talk to me about this game that you told me about. You said it's Hearthstone, but not bad or exactly. better. Exactly. So, this, so Faria came out uh, late March. Okay. I got onto the train a little bit late. Uh, so it's little, a card game. It's a card game, pretty much. A uh, little background is I was so hot on Hearthstone when that first came out. So was the, everyone, I feel. So was everyone, yeah. But, like, I got into the beta. I was so into it. I played it, like, constantly. But then Hearthstone didn't do anything. And the things that they added to the game later were just, like, padding. Like, bullshit padding that wasn't fun and wasn't interesting. And then I just kind of dropped off of it. And I kept thinking in the back of my mind, what if someone fixed Hearthstone? And these guys over at Faria, I don't remember the name of their studio, because whatever. They they kind of did that. And the whole game definitely does feel like they interviewed a bunch of Hearthstone like professionals. Like, what could you fix about Hearthstone if you could? And they're like, this is what we're doing. Like, okay, let's do exactly that. 
So, so I guess I'm... You, yeah, yeah. To give you the outline of how it does it different is... You've played a little bit of Hearthstone. I have not played... Have I not. just know it's, like, Magic. And I've played Magic. Okay. So it's like Hearthstone, but instead of, like, having a board, like, mm-hmm. where you play cards, it's like a grid system. And before you play a card, you have to, like, add a grid oh, okay. that's your own grid. And a grid could be either, like, a neutral thing, or it could be one of five different types. Fire, water, uh, desert, and forest. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. So as right. The, so, as like, instead keep... of a plain playing field, you have literal, like, grid, like honeycomb grids you put yes. things on. Okay. And then, and then, like that, you don't like immediately like go for your opponent. Right. Way you have to like work your way to there, where there's some strategy as well as getting cards. It looks like card chess. Kinda. It does, which is very fun about it. Uh, also, how it fixes uh, Hearthstone stuff is in Hearthstone you choose like one of nine heroes, and each hero has its own like set of cards that only it can use, and there's neutral cards, but only they can use it. In Feria, there's the neutral cards as well as the fire, water. Uh, desert and uh, forest cards, but they can be used like in any combination. Mm-hmm. You can mix and match anything, and there's also some cards that work best if you have a deck that does that combination of everything. It so sounds there's, so there's uh, a lot more variety to it. Yeah, as I was gonna say, it sounds very dynamic and yeah. But like my favorite thing about it is, unlike Hearthstone, which pretty much you could only like battle people online. As well as the arcade, not the arcade, um, the arena stuff, which I'll get into that later. But there's also this, like, solo stuff that's, like, you fight against AIs that are actually, like, intelligent. In Hearthstone, the AI battling was, like, really bad. But there's also this thing called puzzles, where basically it would give you, like, this set of boards and, like, these cards. And it's like, okay, win this turn. Huh. So it, it lets, which lets you think. And Hearthstone the, didn't have that, huh? No, no, no. Oh, wow, that seems and like And it lets you, like. Think about cards in a different way. Like, how can I do this this turn when the answer is like super not clear? And I love that the puzzles in Feria are so good, and they perfectly like build up and teach you how to play the game, like really well. Gotcha. Um, onto the like. Um, but I guess before you get into that, yeah. this is a free to play game. This huh? is a free to play game. Just so like that thing you you mentioned, it kind of sounds like a sort of like a single player thing. Is that just accessible or how? Does yeah. It... Okay. I mean, if you pay money, you can get access to more things, but from what I've been able to play, because I haven't put any money into it, it's a lot better than Hearthstone in terms of, like, playing for free gives you more content than Hearthstone does. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's a free game, so they need to make money somehow. Right. I'm not not, going to completely be like, come on, just give me everything for free. But it does give you a lot more in for free, and, like, getting cards and packs is a lot easier than it is in Hearthstone. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like, in the, uh, instead of Hearthstone has this arcade mode, not arcade, arena mode, where basically you, it gives you random cards, you just make a deck. Uh, Fairy has a similar thing called uh, Pandora mode, which has the same concept, except you also have, like, these exclusive cards that are only to that mode that are basically, like, OP. Oh, okay. And it also has these little, like, crystals where if you draw them something happens and then once you get all five basically the whole map changes and you get a whole bunch of mana and just everything goes fucking wild that sounds cool it is really fun and i think i think hearthstone people who or at least people who played hearthstone and liked it would be very interested in playing it it's very good so far this is made by abracam i believe that's their only game and they are supporting it very very well you can play it on ios as well apparently yes ios and android huh game looks neat I like the look of it better than Hearthstone. Oh yeah, it is a very nice look. Very nice. Doesn't look as uh, Warcrafty, which I don't like the look of Warcraft. Yeah, and that's also cool because everything in it is original and it's not like tied to Warcraft lore. I don't know about their logo, but that's the only thing. Their logos, yeah. I mean, it's it's their first game. It looks like some Skylander shit. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's a very good game. Very very free, so I would recommend it. Okay, is that all you got to say about that? That's all I got to say. That was neat. That was more. I was way more engaged by that than I thought it was. So it's it's a surprisingly engaging game. I I played it just because my friend 